वेलकम फ्रेंड्स माय नेम इज अविनाश गोरक्षेकर एंड आई वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू टू अनदर इंटरेस्टिंग एपिसोड ऑफ कोनक्सिया हाई फ्लायर्स फ्रेंड्स इन दीस एपिसोड्स वी टॉक टू यू अबाउट इमर्जिंग कंपनीज एंड यू नो फ्रॉम इमर्जिंग सेक्टर्स एंड व्हिच आर यू नो रियली प्रॉमिसिंग इन टर्म्स ऑफ फ्यूचर ग्रोथ पोटेंशियल वी टॉक टू द प्रमोटर्स ऑफ सच कंपनीज एज फार एज देयर बिजनेस मॉडल एंड देयर यू नो ग्रोथ प्लान्स आर कंसर्नड एंड इन दिस प्रोसेस वी मेक एन एफर्ट टू टॉक to the promoters of such companies because uh, you know that helps us understand the company's operations better and today friends we have got a very interesting company uh, you know from the city space and the company's name is wise travel india limited and we have the pleasure and privilege of having the top management team mr ashok vashisht who is the founder and ceo of the company uh, ashok ji uh, welcome to the show and thank you very much for sparing your valuable time uh, sir छोटा सा इंटरव्यू है लेकिन आई बिलीव वील बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड योर कंपनीज ऑपरेशंस इन अ वेरी नाइस मैनर सो थैंक यू वंस अगेन एंड लेट अस बिगिन सो थैंक यू अविनाश जी एंड थैंक यू एवरीवन फॉर हैविंग मी ऑन द शो सो अविनाश जी ओवर टू यू ऑल अशोक जी फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन व्हिच इज वेरी एलिमेंट्री इफ यू कुड यू नो टेल अस यू नो हाउ डिड दिस बिजनेस जर्नी एज एन एंटरप्रेन्योर स्टार्टअप फॉर यू व्हेन यू स्टार्टेड दिस बिजनेस अ लिटिल अबाउट यू नो हाउ द इनिशियल यू नो स्टार्टअप प्रोसेस वाज एंड बेसिकली यू नो इफ यू कुड गिव अस सम इनसाइट अबाउट the management team apart from you who were the other founding members of this company and then uh, we would like to understand the basic business model of the company and what is the current positioning of our company as of now in the domestic market so if you could add some color on these points and start so i think sir this starts with uh, my journey as uh, i started working with the transport corporation of india in 1995 as a management trainee from there i worked with uh, <clears throat> various other uh, brands in the country which was hertz europe car uh, international travel house uh, then uh, was the coo for uh, easy cabs launched uh, that particular brand in 2004 2005 in um, 2009 um, we started wise travel india private limited which was uh, uh, named as wki cabs and uh, the obvious reason is because i don't know anything else other than you know uh, running taxis or running uh, the mobility business nobody ever gave me a job in any other sector so that is the reason i was always remain in this sector and i think i was uh, born for this sector and uh, you know uh, having worked with various brands for various uh, products in mobility i uh, gained some experience but wherever i worked or still i am working i never thought that uh, you know it is somebody else's company i always thought it is my company and that is the reason i had the uh, guts to start this business in 2009 absolutely from scratch with absolutely uh, maybe a very little capital which we could save as employees and in this journey i had uh, vivek who is my co-founder and hema uh, the second co-founder and we started together with whatever little savings that we had so uh, to uh, give you perspective uh, we bought our first car in 2010 uh, and on the third day itself that car was robbed new car i still remember it was a fiat linea robbed in ghaziabad somewhere and the insurance claim in last 14 years still is not uh, uh, settled the reason is because the police says that it was a robbery it was a theft the insurance company says it was a robbery and in between do chakkon ke beech mein main pisa hua so that is that is that is what the story is so in 2009 we started in just september uh in the first year i think uh, we were lucky enough to uh, get a first client and uh, we took up the business which nobody else was taking and rightly so because beggars are not choosers when you start uh sabse pehle sab log pehle chhod dete hain because kursi ko salam hota hai so when i uh, uh, started my own business it was from scratch the first thing that i did is stop talking to the entire world the only thing that happens is they demotivate you the only question they ask you is what is new thing that you are going to bring on the table niche kaise create karoge all these kind of words which probably is difficult to answer and people who answer this i don't know whether they become successful or not <clears throat> i said there are 2000 companies i am 2001 my first goal is to kick my head above the water 
and if i'm able to do then we will work out the strategies and philosophies and visions and missions of the organization and i think uh, we had been lucky uh, we had been very lucky in getting the team with us so people from day one who joined are still with us so that's that's what talks about the ethos of the organization i think exactly. most of the companies uh, and most of our colleagues uh, initially we were not even able to offer what market is able to offer but i think yeah. they have a lot of uh, sincerity and commitment in me i will say or in whatever that we wanted to start so this was initial phase um started with four five members and ramping it up to around 700 plus people some 12000 drivers so it was it was i think thanks to my people today if i'm giving this interview i would like to actually thank them because on the backstage they had been working really hard to get us where we are so so fine i think uh, very nicely articulated by you ashok ji Ashok, you now uh, just a, a question which is related to this. Uh, I wanted to know now, uh, W2E at AI Caps. Now, what is the kind of current positioning of the company in the domestic market? You know, if you could tell us where does the company stand in terms of its market share, in terms of its reach. If you could tell us, you know, what is the geographical spread of W2E across uh, the country? I mean, इसके बारे में थोड़ा बताइए so that we can understand your company better. So uh, there are five different verticals that we are working in. as far as mobility is concerned the first one is called car rental which is typically where you are uh, giving airport transfers and car at disposal to various people so this becomes one part of the business the second part of the business is employee transportation where you are uh, taking employees from office home office the third business vertical is managed services in transportation or they call it end to end uh, mobility we were pioneers in introducing this concept in india in 2000 in the world actually in 2015 and today uh, some of the very very large corporates are only working on these concepts like what uh, jll or cbri does for facilities management we do it for uh, mobility management and the fourth and uh, fourth project that we work on is projects and government uh, tenders so when i say projects making some bespoke solutions for ports for airports and providing the mobility uh, complete mobility solution because those are very very um, technical in nature where the car has to be driven the driver has to have a different kind of a training so these are various for uh, verticals that we are so if i talk about projects uh, maybe we are number 1 as of now Uh, in managed services again we are number 1 when we talk about end to end uh, employee transportation it is a very very fragmented business where we are talking about home office home so in this business the regional players uh, are very strong there are some national players so i may say that we are in the first four to five companies in the country in the car rental space also we are in first four to five companies in the country so in last uh, 14 years um, um, we are completely bootstrapped and getting on to that position was uh, something we really worked on and i think uh, the dna of the organization is that we try and understand the customers requirement okay so hum ye nahi karte ki aapka pair bada hai jute ka size chota hai to thoda sa pair kaat lo uh we try and fit in as per what their need is this is this is what we do for most okay. of the organizations so well, understood uh, ashok ji very nicely again mentioned by you now ashok ji i was reading your uh, presentation and prospectus so just wanted to understand you all have got a presence at well airports so sir iske bare mein bataiye ki how does this help you you know having uh, you know positioning at you know uh, at these well important uh, airports so iske bare mein agar if you can yes, tell us 17. something which can you know add value how does So 17 airports are uh, actually. So uh, one is uh, we have 12 offices in the country, uh, which are controlling 17 airport counters and uh, 250 uh, cities where we can provide services in the country. Uh, small, two tier, three tier cities. Uh, we have a very good uh, presence in northeast uh, Bihar. Uh, you know some of the areas where. Uh, 
some of the companies don't even think of uh, going we try and uh, give services in those areas uh, these airports give you a lot of visibility uh, these airports will give a lot of trust in a customer's mind that these this company is present at uh, all the airports so uh, when you have a presence at the airport uh, the directors the organization the promoters all the staff they have to go through a rigorous uh, verification process of uh, bureau of civil aviation security which is called bicas yeah. so uh, uh, that that uh, gives you a lot of confidence in terms of when people uh, hire cars from you or even when you are servicing corporate individual so they get the same kind of service across the board though uh, uh, I don't know it is right or wrong to mention it might not be very profitable but in terms of uh, visibility and brand recall uh, it is a better thing to be at there yeah, exactly i think uh, rightly mentioned by you ashok ji now coming to your customer base yeah. you mentioned that you know you have a very uh, strong lineup of customers if you could share some names which are the key customers you know especially the corporates you know which you cater to and in terms of the active customer base अगर मोटा मोटी मैं पूछूं कि सर इतने साल आप ये लाइन में हो तो मोटा मोटी हमारा एक्टिव कस्टमर बेस कितना होगा इफ यू कुड यू नो शेयर सम यू नो इनफो ऑन दिस सो एक्टिव कस्टमर बेस इज मोर देन 500 कस्टमर्स कॉर्पोरेट कस्टमर्स ओके एंड सम ऑफ द बिग नेम्स मे बी ब्रिटिश पेट्रोलियम इन द पेट्रोलियम सेगमेंट कैस्ट्रॉल देन वी टॉक अबाउट एचएसबीसी यूबीएस बैंक इन दैट कैटेगरी linkedin microsoft ibm google so uh, all the fortune 500 companies uh, almost are on the list amazon uh, these are some of uh, very valued customers that we have uh, on the platform okay and uh, ashok ji now these are all b2b customers iska matlab aap uh, basically b2c model chalate hain ya basically you are focusing more on the b2b model i mean i just wanted to understand how does the structure of your business come is it largely b2b or does some part of the business also come from b2c so sir uh, b2b we uh, so let me answer this chronologically uh, we started b2b because in b2b business there is a surety in terms of what you can get though uh, uh, there are difficulties in terms of matching the customers expectation and that is what we are good at um, so we started with b2b uh, in uh, 2011 12 we started b2c also uh, by acquiring wincab by acquiring smart ride all these companies but then uh, there was a sudden influx of uh, some aggregators and large aggregators with uh, i don't i don't know whether well or deep pockets i should call it uh, so they uh, so the, the policy was they were uh, subsidizing the customers incentivizing the drivers and uh, that was a difficult time for us to sustain or be into b2b or b2c market at that point of time the companies with very good fundamentals uh, were able to survive that uh, competitive uh, landscape at that point of time um, i don't know what kind of million dollars were invested into uh, into into making the market at for that point of time but then uh, um, our ethos were very strong we were ensuring that you know customer service innovation relationship resources who are servicing them are very very important and we focused only on that and that is the reason uh, we were able to uh, ramp up numbers come may what uh, in b2b segment mm-hmm. year on year our Uh, growth was close to around 50% uh, cagr uh, year on year till uh, 2020 and then we had this covid so primarily b2b but now if you talk about uh, b2c segment i think uh, we we are working out some strategies on b2b in a very limited uh, segmentation because b2c is all about burning and um, yeah. my maths is pretty weak so it is difficult to understand how to burn the money uh, maybe uh, we'll figure out where each transaction has to uh, be profitable or at least sustainable if not profitable correct correct so fine i think ashok ji very again nicely mentioned by you now tell me one thing in terms of the opportunity for the b2b segment where you know you have said that there is some maturity in pricing and 
some stability uh, which you have observed tell us in the next say 3 to 5 years what is the kind of growth which you visualize in the b2b segment of the mobile uh, you know ca cab rental mm -hmm. market that is something which is going to be directly going to uh, you know inversely uh, you know uh, applicable for a company like us so iske bare mein bataiye sir growth agle 3 5 saal mein aapko kya dikh raha hai what is the outlook which you would share with us uh sir agar main if i talk about the complete market size of uh, car rental industry per se which includes uh, employee transportation which includes uh, your car rental mm -hmm. any kind of uh, mobility business and when i say mobility it means that moving people from point a to point b that industry is close to uh, 240 lakh crore uh, 240 lakh crore so uh, and the uh, logic is very simple we have around 50 lakh uh, commercially registered uh, vehicles in the country which are around 5 years or 6 years old so based on that you calculate the number and uh, you'll be able to get these numbers there are various numbers which are populated on the internet on various sites from various studies but uh, there is no one place where you get exact number now talking about the growth whether it is b2b or b2c you can anticipate a growth of around uh, 10% year on year uh, because of two three reasons one is uh, because of uh, natural uh, price inflation which happens uh, the second one is of course there is a growth of 8% or 9% and with the lot of influx of uh, companies especially the manufacturing base which is coming up in india uh, we will see uh, uh, a lot of uh, increase in the employee transportation as well as travel we are directly linked to the airline business if you uh, actually look into so uh, if there are uh, 10 million passengers who are traveling in a month so there has to be some percentage which has to come to you because for every person who travels one on one flight there are four transactions which happens and four transaction means from home to airport he reaches the other city from there to his destination back to airport and back to home so uh, the size is pretty humongous as of now even to calculate what percentage we are going to own i think it will be uh, uh, it will not be right to do that uh, because uh, the unorganized segment uh, of the business is very small the overall business may not Uh, be even two percent of the uh, overall market size, putting all these you called organized companies into one bucket. So that's that's what my and there's a lot of things which can be done, especially on the innovation part. How you are going to service your customers uh, for various segmentation, and from the tech part, how easy you'll be able to make them uh, use your technology. So oh, fine, uh, Ashok. Now, one thing which uh, came out from your question, I would like to ask you that: What are the key drivers of growth for our business? You said that you know aviation is a very big variable. जितने ज़्यादा लोग you know airline से जाते हैं, obviously that becomes you know these become your customers. So, is this the only variable which one has to see when we see growth numbers for a company like you, or are there some other you know the drivers also which obviously drive the business for you know WTI? So, इसके बारे में जरा बताइए. सर देखिए इस दुनिया में सबसे आसान दो बिजनेस हैं एक तो टैक्सी चलाना दूसरा घर बनाना हर आदमी को आता है बिल्कुल <laughs> और जब वो एक्चुअली बनाने लगता है या टैक्सी चलाने लगता है तब उसको समझ में आता है कि भाई ये बिजनेस है क्या तो देर इज सो मच ऑफ कंपटीशन एज फेर एज टैक्सी इज कंसर्न और एनी अदर बिजनेस because every uh, body can get into this business without there is no entry barrier there is no exit yeah. the only way that you have to just make your size show humongous the next uh, close competition should be miles away my uh, only thing on this is first is you should be able to make bespoke solutions for your clients which has to be very very client centric because aaj bhi agar uh, you go to a tailor uh, in spite of the fact that uh, everything is available uh, you know off the shelf on the uh, various platforms 
but still sometimes when you need something which has to be bespoke you go to a tailor that is a yeah. large market. that is a very very large market and especially when you're talking about b2b business when you're talking about uh, giving uh, mobility solutions to uh, residential condominiums uh, i think you can create a very very specific bespoke solution that's one second is of course your resources key resources your technological advancement how you are going to uh, provide them how easy it is to use how you are able to take care of people who are 50 60 plus because they are not very tech savvy maybe a phone call or a call center to provide them the services so these are uh, various things that you have to keep working on innovating on and if you stop innovating i think you'll be out of the business so as an entrepreneur i think you have to keep your eyes and ears open all the time to ensure that uh, good bad ugly listen to the ideas uh, and then analyze it okay okay ashok ji now uh, coming to the b2c part of the business uh, you know you said you have got various uh, services you know which you mentioned in your earlier you know interaction tell me in terms of pricing uh, uh, ashok ji how do you decide is it a customized package which you have developed for various customer segments or is it you know typically customer ki requirement hap aap dekhte ho kitna badi opportunity hai kitna business hai uske baad pricing decide hoti hai so if you could tell us something how the pricing is decided for every product segment which you you know which your company actually undertakes sir ye uh, you have actually hit uh, the nail right on the head this is a combination of all the factors that you have mentioned and it is not one okay. it is customer preference it is the market and it is your own costing it is your gut feeling because when you are filing a tender which is uh, worth 2 crores a month uh, what will you do you will you have to listen to the market rather than you know uh, uh, working on your cost sheets and figuring out that this cannot be done and most yeah. of the time when you are doing it on the cost sheets the pricing doesn't work out Exactly. it just cannot work out Perfect. but somebody is always there to do that work because <laughs> i if i remember i also started business like that the work which nobody was able to do i was able to uh, perform it and still make uh, my two cents so similarly yeah. i think uh, okay. price is the uh, selling price is always decided by the market okay you have to control your cost price okay control because that is what you can control selling exactly. price you know, uh, a car is a car is a car is a car so one is available for 100 rupees why somebody will pay you 200 rupees maybe some uh, quality service something you can say but not to the extent of a pair or 100% increase in price so i have a strong feel the price is always market driven you have to have your uh, ears on the market and one one of the things is i always keep saying this to my team and which is most of the time we take decisions which are pertaining to 44 degrees sitting in 22 degrees hmm board room mein baith ke conference room mein baith ke hum log na wo driver ke baad bare mein baith ke decide karte hain uh i think if you have to take decision about 44 degrees it is better to be on the ground uh when yeah. you are taking big decisions i remember the equipments which we keep in the car uh, ye jitne bhi tracking equipments hote hain kabhi hum log bahar se khareed ke leke aaye uh in the uh, summers when the temperature uh, rises to 47 degrees or 48 degrees the uh, entire thing got melted because the car was locked and uh, so you have to understand that this is not going to work in the indian climatic conditions exactly uh, so these are few things after all uh, of course uh, when you are working on the pricing you have to see what is the utilization because your pricing is always the outcome of utilization yeah. how much a car is going to be utilized that of course we take into account but primarily uh, it is market driven we can't decide in silos sitting in uh, the cabins no, but ashok ji uh, just one uh, small question you know from a financial standpoint iska matlab uh, pricing is always going to be dynamic so you know a certain degree of uh, pricing power is it there in your business or basically it's like a combination of costing and obviously what the market is willing to pay for that service so pricing power ke liye kuch jagah hai hamare dhande mein ya basically it is all volume absolutely hai 
so uh, you decide on volumes that uh, how much volume is coming from which customer based on volumes you uh, have various uh, categories of rates which you give to your customers uh, at what time of the day the car is required also matters a lot uh, uh, what kind of services are required so you have a rack rate and based on the utilization if utilization is more the prices will always come down if utilization is less then with what kind of car is required uh what kind of services are required uh whether the car is used less or more so you get the advantage of arbitrage in the entire okay. model so for a typical example when you are giving a car for 8 hour 80 kilometers so there be arbitrage advantage of uh, either kilometer or hours correct the person will not use for 8 hours maybe 6 hours so you have the arbitrage advantage of uh, 2 hours so okay. you have to figure out a lot of things. There is no one method of driving the price. Okay. No, no. Now understood. I think very nicely explained by you. Ashokji, now as far as your geographical mix is concerned, as far as you know the company's revenue is concerned, which are the pockets where a large part of the revenue comes for WTI? Is it North India or is it Western India? Thoda sa geographical mix bataiye. Sir, uh, I think uh, across, if I talk about North India, uh, West India and uh, South, it is equally divided. Um, okay. We get equal kind of revenues because Bangalore, Chennai, Hyderabad are giving us good business. Pune is phenomenally uh, giving us great businesses. Uh, in uh, West, if I talk about Calcutta and the North, uh, sorry, East, you know, Calcutta and the Northeast part of the country, we are doing pretty well. Uh, and as far as uh, uh, North is concerned, Delhi uh, contributes to around uh, 25 to 30 percent of the revenues so it is balanced out and it is not in one pocket oh, understood uh ashokji now one uh, basic fundamental question relating to our businesses that you know drivers are our key assets of course you have a fleet of 7000 cars so uh, you drivers ka jo, uh, you know jo, apka jo, uh, you know ka, you know jo asset hai. And how do you ensure that these drivers are dedicated to our vehicle? Because finally, see, drivers are the most important critical variable in our business. So, you know, first of all, how do you source new drivers and how do you motivate existing drivers so that, you know, uh, your business is, you know, continuously generating a lot of value for all your large B2B kind of corporate customers? So, um, thank you very much. Uh, you are the first person to call the message. Uh, otherwise, normally, uh, I don't like it when people uh, don't regard them because they are the people who uh, uh, who are amazing in terms of the time they spend with the customers. Uh, they are the people who are your brand ambassadors, actually. If, if I, as a general, am not able to convey my message to a sipahi who is on the front line, then all the philosophies and everything doesn't work. Similarly, uh, I think hats off to all um, our uh, chauffeurs, drivers uh, in the system. Uh, they are doing a tremendous job and we should respect them. And that's what I keep telling my team as well all the time. Because uh, if you respect them, they will convey the same to your customers. If you treat them badly, uh, the same will be conveyed to your customers. So how do you want to? Uh, that's one. Second is when uh, the entire offices primarily are closed on Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, I think there is a rigorous training program which happens every Saturday and Sunday. Okay. So we have training institutes. The entire facilities are given sometimes by the corporate. Sometimes we create on our own. Uh, uh, beautiful facilities are created and I'll be happy to share some of the videos and clips. We have reward and recognition program for the drivers. Uh, whereby every week uh, there are some rewards which are given to uh, them. They're recognized. By and large, uh, 97 to 98% people are very nice. It is only that, you know, uh, it is like digging tons and tons of uh, mud, you'll get ounce of gold. So we have got good people, but sometimes you get some elements, which anyways, we uh, do a lot of ref checks uh, police verification, background verification, and then we take them into the system. So, a uh, uh, lot of bad elements are uh, eliminated, and then we take care of them in terms of training, in terms of whatever that has to be provided. Okay. Ashoki, currently, how many drivers would we be having like? 
if you could just tell us again board, yeah across the board if uh, i talk about managing them is close to around 10000 okay and on a an, uh, annual basis roughly you know as the fleet size increases so jaise fleet size increase hoti hai aapki planning kaise hoti hai like suppose you know from 7000 uh, fleet size you know you go up to uh, something like 8000 or 9000 vehicles so thoda plan uh, sir ye continuous process hai planning aapko pehle se karni padti hai for these drivers continuous process sir uh, for example if you anticipate a growth of around 5 to 10% every month so uh, market mein aapke log hote hain who are sourcing drivers yeah. uh, continuously every time the drivers are to be sourced from the market okay. so it's a continuous process and right. secondly what we do is uh, uh, we have a rigorous exercise of budgeting okay. which happens uh, fab mein through the entire year which is broken up into uh, four quarters and based on the projections uh, we work out how the revenues will come how the inventory will come when we talk about inventory it is about cars and the drivers so all that is planned uh, only constant thing which i have seen in this is variance so we keep analyzing that all the time so ashok ji now uh, uh, tell me basically since you know we have started and been in the car uh, you know rental business for a long time you know what is the uh, you know uh, value proposition which company offers to its clients and in what way is our company slightly better than competitors you know because obviously in every uh, industry there are going to be competitors both listed and unlisted private as well as uh, you know uh, you know the listed ones so if you could tell us in a very uh, simple way what are the uh, you know kind of value proposition kind of you know checkpoints which probably our company enjoys and which are better than competitors so if you could give some color on that and please comment i think value proposition is for inside value proposition is for the customer so what is the customer expectation a right kind of a vehicle at the right time uh, with a clean vehicle that's that's the simplest uh, expectation from a customer so uh, having dealt with you know uh, more than 100000 drivers and 50000 people still there are some gaps uh, you know a gap of maybe 0.1% 0.2% moment we are able to cover these gaps we'll be able to uh, you know say that okay we have arrived in life it's there's too much of human involvement in our business and which is a driver which is a person who is calling the customer to figure out uh, his requirements etc etc so uh, you know if seamlessly you are able to bridge the gap of all these uh, variables you'll be able to provide service so here uh, you know if i talk about how this simple thing of sending a right car at the right time um, is done and how we are able to achieve 99.8% or 99.9% is that the promoters are experienced we make bespoke solutions for our customers keep training our drivers uh, keep innovating as how to uh, give the best kind of service to our uh, people uh, the requirement of our customers will keep going up the expectations will keep going up how every time you are able to supersede his expectations you are able to give something better to him so it is a continuous process it's a continuous journey and uh, uh, there is no one answer to this question but it is a multifaceted multi dimensional question and where you have to deal with uh, your driver your people uh, your systems your it uh, your innovation uh, so all these things put together you are able to give solution and which is a very very simple solution aapke piche kitni badi machinery chal rahi hai that is none of customers uh, problem aap kitna bada chal raha hai at the end of the day usko ek staff gaadi time pe chahiye that's it nothing else so that is what we do all the time keep innovating keep uh, investing in tech keep uh, investing in people keep investing in training that's it understood i think very nicely articulated ashok ji ashok ji now if you could tell us uh, something on the broad on the financials you know for fy23 what's been the revenue profit of the company and if you could give us some idea about how the company has fared in the first half of fy24 you could add some inputs on this that would be really be helpful perfect sir so uh, 22 uh, if i talk about because i'll take you uh, to a year back when we were uh, struggling with covid the entire organization and the entire country and the world so 22 we must have closed at around 80 crores 
and 23 we closed at around 249 crores okay okay after uh, 249 i think our butta was around 18 crores uh, our pbt was around 13.83 crores and uh, profit after tax was around uh, uh, 10.3 crores now talking about okay. the first half of uh, 2324 we did a revenue of 189 crores in first six months uh, and uh, EBITDA of somewhere around uh, uh, 21 crores and uh, PBT of 14 and PAT of around 11.3 crores. Okay. Uh, we are expecting to close uh, 24 at around uh, 400 plus with PAT of around 22. So that's, that's the okay. run rate which uh, we are going at. Ashok, you know, uh, a very important question, which is very important for all of us. Uh, I believe the company has decided to go public. So if you could share with us, you know, what are the, you know, uh, what are the kind of uh, capital market plans? What kind of uh, fund is the company planning to raise? What is, what is the main objective of raising these funds? And I believe there was some small pre-IPO offering also, which was made by the company. About 5% of the equity was, uh, you know, given. So if you could, you know, give us some inputs on these, uh, you know, inputs. So uh, uh, when we talk about this IPO, uh, we uh, are looking at infusing around 85 crores uh, in the business, which is primarily towards uh, increasing our customer base, our footprint, consolidating our uh, position in all the cities where we are, uh, very subtly going into the B2C space and of course going global as far as the car rental market is concerned. So we have started uh, Dubai operations um, and uh, the reason we selected Dubai is because that particular city has got more than 200 uh, nationalities. It gives you a real glimpse of a global presence. So once we get the feel of uh, how things are to work globally, um, after the first test market in Dubai, we will expand our horizon to Far East, Middle East and of course some mm -hmm. of the European countries. Uh, depending on the kind of uh, population that goes and comes from here you know, to start with. And uh, uh, when we will start operations at all these places also, because uh, the kind of relationships that we need to leverage on um, our clients who are global. And if you are able to provide service here, we can provide the service uh, everywhere else. So uh, that's the philosophy. Uh, and that is the reason the money is required to uh, expand your base. And why can't uh, an Indian uh, mobility company become global? Okay. Because okay. Uh, we have the required strength. And when I look at our people, I think they are phenomenal in terms of um, kind of common sense that we have. Uh, especially when you work in India, when you go outside uh, to find that kind of... I'm, 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 I'm not wanting to make any such comments, but I think the people here are willing to work and they're willing to find a solution to every problem that you face. Whereas across, I think it's quite slightly difficult. Okay. okay. So that's the hard thing we're looking at. Uh, uh, Ashok, uh, just wanted to get a follow-up. You know, if you could just tell us what was the pre-IPO quantum of funds which was raised. If you could just tell us the quantum, that would be fine. So uh, this was around five crores uh, just to okay. test waters. Okay, okay, understood. Now coming on the working capital side of the business, uh, Ashokji, if you could tell us typically what's the working capital cycle in our business? You know how quickly uh, you know does the capital rotate in the business? Like you know cash flow ke point of view se, our working capital cycle kitni lambi hoti? Uh, Forty-five to sixty days. Okay, that's so that's a typical cycle. Days, okay. Okay. Uh, most, most of the time uh, we are able to because uh, uh, the pressure is more than So you are... When resources are more than you, you leave a little deal. But that is not the point here. Uh, okay. If it goes 90 days or 6 uh, months, se upar jata, then it becomes a problem. So uh, typically 45 okay. to 60 days mm -hmm. are cycled. Okay. And Ashokji, just one question, you know, from the financial point of view, I was observing that in your first half, your operating margins have actually jumped from something like 7-8% to 11%, you know, so margin improvement bhi aapka already aaj chuka hai. So can I assume that jaise jaise aapka, you know, volume of business, yani jitne jada customers aap, uh, you know, carry karte ho, and as the fleet size increases, 
does it have a natural impact on your ebitda margin ebitda margin will obviously then get scaled up because of these two factors yes, more absolutely. number of rights and more number of fleets so automatically that results in good uh, operating leverage for you absolutely so today 100 people are taking care of uh, 10000 rights even these rights become to uh, 20000 mm-hmm. uh only t- maybe a marginal increase of 10 people will be handling that job to give you a very simple example okay. so we have to reach the economies of scale and you have to increase your utilization that's what we are working on and uh, moment you reach uh, the economies maybe uh, then you have to figure out how uh, you have to segregate various functions but as of now i think there's lots which can be done with the same thing okay understand uh, last question ashok ji now uh, mm-hmm. typically in our business you know we have seen covid which was an abnormal event but typically in our business hamare business pe sabse bada risk factor kya hai like if you leave alone covid you know which was an abnormal event it affected almost everybody in the industry but in a car mobility business what is the single most risk which you think is most important and how have you mitigated this risk up till now uh sir kuch bhi nahi hai aadmi ki mobility kabhi khatam nahi hogi Uh, a person will always move from point a to point b the only risk is the government may articulate some rules which may not be in your favor but if it is not in my favor okay. then it is not in anybody's favor so uh, uh so i think uh, this business is there to grow until unless you have something like covid but then it is for everyone it is not for only one organization and it is something which you can't control but when you talk about a uh, real exactly. threat exactly uh, i think it is it can be only government policy or if the government comes out and says that i want to run the entire mobility uh, space still they will require people like us to manage it so uh, there's no doubt of business exactly. Uh, exactly. in this space <laughs> even if, if the government says they they want to run it fine okay. we will become their employees no okay. problem Exactly. Hey, I think uh, what you mentioned is right that this is a hugely scalable business with a huge, uh, you know, runway for growth. So I think you know, in that perspective, what you mentioned is absolutely right. Uh, Ashok ji, thank you very much for sparing your valuable time. In fact, uh, you know, we could understand your company's business model in a very nice way. So thank you, thank you to your entire management team, and best wishes for your forthcoming IPO. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you and Namaskar.